And so take like a, a car alarm, you know, those just beep, 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 beep. I hear them in the neighborhood all the time that I live in. So I was like, oh, you could just like add a beat and like start improvising and doing some chords. I was like totally outrageous, but I think I'm gonna have to do it now that you brought it up. It's top of the list now, top of to-dos. We're, to go. We're ready to go. All right, so it's official now. Hello. Hello, everyone. Yay! Welcome. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Okay, so for real, my name is Puzzle P. Uh, I've been coming to GDQ events for a while now. I think I started watching in 2013 and was like, I grew up watching my brother play a lot of video games. And so immediately when I heard about this event was like, oh, these are my people. They play video games and I get to watch. Like, <laughs> love it. And not to say that I don't also play a lot of video games too, but I feel like we can all probably relate where there are certain games, certain genres maybe that you love to watch, but that they're just like, you don't have, like I don't have the patience level for certain games or they just freak me out. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I would freak out and just like, you know, controller goes somewhere. So uh, it's really fun to watch. And of course, uh, I'm super, super connected to the music because I am a musician. I've been singing since I was, I think my parents told me I was six when they discovered that I could sing. And I was like, that's cool. Cause I just turned 30. So that me or 36. So that just means I've been singing for 30 years. Yay! <laughs> um, but a little background, just real quick. Uh, I've been singing professionally since I was 15. I started in jazz. Uh, before I went to college, I decided to go out and gig around the Twin Cities and try that whole scene out. And then I got a Bachelor of Fine Arts from the University of Minnesota. So uh, skill versus, you know, versus talent. Uh, I have lots of opinions about it. If you have musical talent, it means you hear something and you can kind of mimic it or you can hear something and go, oh yeah, some, some part of you understands it. That's, that's a talent or like you sing or you make music like right away and people are like, how are you doing that? There's, there's a talent there, right? But then you learn from speed running too that there's skill involved in a lot of things, right? So it's a lot of it is, is the more you do it, the better you get at it. And that's where skill comes from. So talent and skill, they're, they're, kind, of, they're kind of both there, but that everybody here is capable of making noise. I heard you all clapping. So you can play rhythm instruments, these two. And you all were whooping and hawing and hooing and yay! And that means that you all can sing. So if you can talk, we're just improvising right now, right? We're just talking, we're saying things, we're on different pitches. You're technically singing. So already, I just want everyone in this room to feel like regardless of your skill level, you are welcome here. And hopefully you will get something from this panel that will help inspire you to continue making music in some way. And if not, you know, go out there and support your musicians, okay? <laughs> All right, so I would like to know first a little bit about y'all. That would be really good to know. Um, so how many people here uh, play rhythm games or music games in general? Everyone, yay. How many of you have made music on your own? Got a few musicians, great. I love this. Are you like a karaoke singing in the shower kind of? <laughs> you know what? I mean, I'm, I'm a huge believer in there are no wrong answers. Like if you're going out there and making art, like you're doing the right answer to me. That's great. So yes, karaoke, um, if you do rock band, right? You can be the singer, you can be the guitarist, you can be anybody. It's kind of cool, right? So it gets you involved. Even DDR, I would say, is definitely a music game, right? Oh my gosh. It took me like a year to get good at that game. It's so it's so difficult, but like you're you're making your body an instrument now. Now you are the rhythm maker. So it's it's so great. Um, I'm glad to hear that you all play. Um, what else did I want to ask you? Um, has anybody actually covered a video game song before? Oh my goodness. Okay. So do we have? Are, are you you guys are in like bands? I mean, have you have you assembled together? That's great. Tell me, tell me a little bit something. Like, what did you, what did you do specifically? Oh, and we have a microphone here. Do you mind? Do you mind just sing? tell me a little bit about you? Hey guys. Hello. Hi. So, should I turn towards them, or should I tell you? I mean, you can, oh, you can I absolutely, absolutely. I want to be a part of everybody's vibe here. I love it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so a few, a uh, few weekends ago, I put together a live uh, concert uh, on my Twitch channel, which was the first time I'd ever tried doing that. See, normally I'm a speedrunner. And so I'm always exclusively doing, uh, you know, spiral runs on my channel, right? So I'm not normally, uh, yeah, woo, spiral. Yeah. And um, 
So I was thinking, man, I want to do music on my Twitch channel. And that's part of the reason I'm coming to this panel is I'm trying to kind of find out a little bit about how you can kind of merge those two worlds of like your love for video games and music. And one of those ways, as you were alluding to, is by covering a lot of your favorite songs and <laughs> turning them into something new. I, uh, I put together a band a few weekends ago and we covered a... Uh, one of the we covered the Final Fantasy VII song. I turned. I actually was writing a song, and then I was like, you know what would be sick is if we put the ba 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 And so I wrote that yes. all out. I wrote that all out in finale, and got this like five piece band together with like with vibraphone and uh, and keyboard, and that was a lot of fun. And also, the in case you guys haven't seen already, I'm sure you guys have already seen the keyboard and drums over there are so awesome, man. And so yeah, so I'm just screwing around like playing all sorts of stuff in there. Wow, that's fantastic. What was your name? Pablo, Deo. Deo, I'm Deo. Deo. Hi, Hi, oh my gosh. Well, thank you for that. That's yeah, awesome no to hear. So having a Twitch channel gives you an outlet. Like it used to be YouTube, and I think I'm even gravitating now away. We're going, eh, Twitch, you know, slightly less obnoxious advertisements. Um, but OK, so I digress. Uh, so we have people of all skill levels. People in here who have we've we've gone from karaoke singing in the shower. Don't listen to me. I'm just doing this for my own benefit. Not a wrong answer. And then there are people that have. I love it that you're trying to bridge the gap between games and music. And I mean, we're in the same boat, friend. Totally, 100% in the same boat. Um, yeah, right? I mean, obviously, we're here literally in this. We're going to call this hotel a boat. We are all in the same boat. Um, so the cool thing, and we were talking, I was talking with this wonderful gentleman here too, about uh, hearing people sometimes at these events even that are noodling on the piano and trying to figure things out, right? You can kind of kind of uh, figure out melodies and hear it in your head. That's, again, where I was talking about having a musical talent. If you hear the ear, you know, you have this wonderful ear and you can hear the melody in your head and then figure it out and translate it onto an instrument super duper helpful and maybe that instrument again is right here because if you're singing in the shower chances are you're still in tune i mean you're still singing things that are games so i'm going to jump into my actual spiel here because uh my hope is that no matter where you're at this will help to get your feet wet i'm not going to get too advanced because i don't want to completely go over anybody's heads here. So if it's a little slow, I apologize, but if it's, uh, if it, and if you ends up feeling like this was way too advanced, let me know. I would love to, to be able to alter this. So my first thing that I wanna talk about is my three steps to get you from, I have no idea to I'm covering a song, okay? And that first step is start simple, okay? Start where you personally are at, not where you want to go, but where you are at. This is something that I have even learned from speedrunners here at GDQ, just talking to them. I've um, volunteered as a stylist for a couple of years now, and that gives me an opportunity to talk to them one-on-one -on -one and say, hey, how are you doing this? You know, How does this even happen? And it's starting with a game, they always recommend starting with the simplest run they can think of. Like pick a game that only takes, you know, like once you've got the speed run down, it only takes you five minutes, right? Start that way with your own music. If you don't know how to play an instrument, start with something you can just sing. If you do play an instrument and you only know how to play two chords, great, find a song that's only two chords, those two chords, you know, or learn those chords, you know, that, that'll get you there, but you only have to think about those two. The second step, and I will go over these again, but the second step is practice, practice, practice. Same as speed running. You gotta just keep doing it until it's so much like just ingrained for me. I play the uke, so like it's just so ingrained that I don't have to think about that part anymore, right? And then the third step is truly for when the, the part of my uh, panel that I described as finding your own style. I think this is a really important factor. And that is once you have the song and you've, practiced it a bunch, now you improvise, okay? So the third step is start, I always call it noodling. I don't know why. I know that's some way of like catching catfish. <laughs> um, I didn't find that out until I was like on the road touring. Somebody's like, that's when you go in and catch a, I was like, oh my goodness. I didn't know catfish just bit onto your arm like that. Good to know. I was thinking more like you slap spaghetti down on a plate and you follow a noodle around wherever it goes. But again, but again, that's where my jazz influence comes from, my background personally, and where I started easy is to start from like, well, when you're in jazz, you just scat sing. You just, whatever happens. It's not about making the right choices. It's about how do you make wrong choices sound like they were intentional. <laughs> that's part of the deal. So 
Yeah, so start simple. And I think I have a little thing to, a little picture, I think, to put up that says those three things, just to keep those in mind while I'm moving along here. Because I want to give you an example. Starting simple, um, I have suggestions for you. So think about this when you're starting simple. For complete beginners, um, like I said, start with your voice. Go from there. See if you can't find like a karaoke track that might already exist or an instrumental track that might already exist that you can then play around with on top of. If you play an instrument, pick something super easy that maybe there's already a chart for. And I even looked, there's ones for, um, oh, there's my thing, yay, so that you can remember. Um, uh, I did find out Portal, the Still Alive, that sheet music, full sheet music, even for the piano, and it's got the chords over top, oh, that is online. You can download that music. So uh, I think, um, what is his name, Jonathan Coulter, I wanna say? Colton, thank you. Yeah, he, uh, I'm not sure if he's the one who supplied it, but if he is, that's a true bro right there. Uh, it was really nice to do. But so you could even start with Still Alive, see if you can figure out those chords. Um, I think both Bayonetta games, Bayonetta 1 had Fly Me to the Moon and Bayonetta 2 had Moon River. Both of those are technically jazz standards. So the sheet music is absolutely online. Uh, even Ultimate Guitar Tabs, uh, I believe that website has a ton of things. And Rock Band, Guitar Hero, those are all based on songs that are pop songs, like rock songs. We know those. Those are out there too. So that's what I mean by starting simple. Start with something that is totally ingrained in your head already that you can start with. Um, I even put the Pokemon theme because because Pokemon. Um, <laughs> and then if you are super proficient, if you've been in a band before, like this gentleman up front, um, I really do think that it's one of those things you probably by this point can transcribe a little bit. Um, transcribing just means you hear it and then you write it down. So it's being able to translate it basically. It's like if you heard somebody speaking and you could type down what they're saying, having a little music theory background will help you to be able to hear it and go, oh, or Again, you can sit at a piano and fish it out a little bit. Go, I don't know what this, oh, there it is, there it is. That's how you do it. So a prime example and a perfect way to start, I think, is to start with what I was recommending, a two chord song. Now, sometimes you're thinking like, how many songs out there are just two chords? Well, I happen to find one. It's only four measures long. <laughs> and it is in a video game, one I definitely grew up playing, love this game too much, um, but I have a little music track on there. Can you just <laughs> play that and you'll hear, you may recognize it. Uh, should be a, there should be an MP3 for Gato. You see that? Okay. That's okay. Do, 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 do. No. <laughs> Is that a one chord song? <laughs> Technically no. <laughs> That's the noodling part though. Where am I? Where am I? <laughs> do you see it? I'm sorry. I tried to name it nicely. Oh, maybe it's just called example. I'm so helpful. Yeah, so this is, this is my example, okay? Now, you've probably heard this song, right? Uh, this one, uh, I was thinking of the, the, the actual MP3 file. That's okay. Yeah, it's literally called example, which is not helpful. Please play example. Here, let me not be helpful. <laughs> Here's the four measure part, okay? So here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. It starts again, right? So now we know. That's all it is, right? And if I'm gonna start fishing, I've done the homework for you. Spoiler alert, the two chords are D minor and C. and you keep playing it. This is the step two now. We've done the simple part. The next part is to keep doing it over again. Right? To a point where you feel like you could almost 
almost have a conversation with somebody while you're playing it, right? All right, that's probably plenty of that loop. So that song is, right, it's not intended in the game to be any more than a couple of loops before you start getting your butt kicked by Gato. That's the plan. But the cool thing about this song is, again, that it's only the two chords. So it was easy for me in the beginning. I only started learning ukulele a few years ago. So when I first started, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to play any chords on this uke. So starting simple was my first outlet. Then practicing, practicing, practicing. Um, and now that I have Gato completely under my belt and I feel very confident with those four bars, now I move on to my third step. My step is to improvise, right? It's to take that and roll with it. So the first thing that you might do when you're improvising is mess with the tempo. So right now it's this very steady. Right? But maybe we want it a little more Let's try a little more saucy. And no wrong answers. It could be the chicken version. I mean, this is what I'm saying, like noodle, be stupid. This is, I'm an expert at stupid. So like just improvise, be silly, do whatever comes to your head. It could be totally fast paced, it can be anything. So play with the tempo, right? Try out different speeds and see where that rests. Sometimes you sing something and you're like, oh my gosh, this should have been a ballad, like a slow ballad all along. Some songs just surprise me when I play them and it's like that and you're like, oh my gosh, who knew? Um, the next thing I would recommend is to play with the meter or the time signature, okay? So that means that I was counting out the, the measures, right? So it was one, two, and three, and four, and one, and a two, and three, and four, and a one, two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, right? So that's in four, four time. You don't have to memorize this. You might be able to watch the stream back if you're like, what was she talking about, time signature? That's what that means. It means there's four beats. Every beat is a quarter note, okay? So if you get a little music theory under your belt, you, this will all make sense. But if not, you can rely on your ear, okay? After a while, you'll start to notice that most songs that you hear, especially pop songs, are in 4-4. Four, four. Every now and then, you'll run into one that's kind of fun, like 6-8. That's in Final Fantasy 15. na 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 Remember that theme? That's one, two, and three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And one, two, and three, and four, and five. Okay, so it's in it's in six eight. Comp a little more complicated than it needs to be. So don't feel bad if you're just like, what is she even talking about? So don't worry about that. But if we were gonna do gato in six eight, what would that sound say? So it'd be. That, do you hear the difference, right? So that's that's kind of that. Um, another cool way to think about it is um, different styles. Maybe your jam is not jazz. 100% understand that. Maybe you're like, like actually, I kind of like screaming metal music, and I really want to express myself that way. No wrong answers. There's a theme. No wrong answers. You can do it any style that makes sense to you. It turns out. Every one of us is a different person and we all have different things going on in here. So whatever's going on that you need to get out there, follow that because you never know. It could be completely different than something else that's even out there that anybody's ever heard of. And that helps all of us as a artist community to get ideas. We draw ideas off each other, okay? So don't be weird about uh, like, is this, is this okay to do this style? Like, absolutely. Um, and you can mess with the key. So consider if that doesn't feel good in your voice, that if you're singing along to something, you're like, ah, oh, it feels really weird, or maybe the chords are really hard to play on the guitar or something, and you're like, this is just way out of, like, it'd be easy, it's only two chords, but those two chords are, like, ridiculously difficult to play. Consider changing the key that it's in. That's what I've done, and that's what this chart that I've made is. Now, Yasunori Mitsuda obviously wrote the music to Chrono Trigger. The reason my name is also up there is because I wrote lyrics to this song. I decided I wanted it in a different key, 
and it was too short. So if I'm gonna go do a gig somewhere and play uh, Gato's theme, like it'd be over in two seconds, right? And I'd be like, da, 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 thank you, and then leave. And they'd be like, that was brief, right? <laughs> so I wrote a, a few lyrics. So this is, this is what I'm saying. The key that you do it in and potentially some of the 8-bit things that I cover have no lyrics at all. So I either decide to add some lyrics of my own or I decide to just scat sing the whole thing because there are no laws. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm talking about these steps um, and hopefully they make sense. Does anybody have questions up to this point? Anything that I've said that's just totally like, what are you even, what? Okay. We're all together? Yay. You guys are great. Okay. So I want to I wanna talk about the fact that, <laughs> that some songs already exist and I bet you all know exactly what this is where there are games that use almost one song exclusively throughout the whole game. I can think of several Mario games. What was that? Yes, light motifs. So they take, they take songs and then make them in all different ways anyway. So like, yeah, like Mario games do it all the time. I can't think of any Mario games that kind of don't. <laughs> they all sort of take a similar theme and then they add like a Yoshi element that once you jump on him now there's percussion or right it's immediately in your head <laughs> like thanks yosh uh so so that's kind of a cool thing and then another big one is final fantasy because they do a million different versions of the chocobo theme i even have my own version of the chocobo theme for that reason because it was like oh my gosh there's there's like samba like crazy dance versions of it there's like really fast there's like super like this is very regal like fancy chocobo so is it all right with everybody if i show you my version of the chocobo theme is that cool yeah okay so the chocobo's theme um if you're feeling like you want to be a part of this of this musical experience jazzy snapping man snap it out with me if you feel like snapping on the twos and fours that would that would make a nice little accompaniment so feel free to my snapping choir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. So prime example of taking something that was already there. People have done a bunch of versions, and now that's my little, my little slice of uh, jazzy version, I guess. And there's lots of them. So there's no, again, no wrong answers. I love to improvise. I love making up scat 
solos, so that was my jam, but that was not the way I started. So again, try not to think like, oh my gosh, there's no way I can go from zero to 100, like no one can. Again, tying it, you know, tying this as much as I can to the speedrunning community, you don't just start speedrunning a game and you're like awesome enough to go out there and stream like there's, right? Has any anybody here speedrun a game? You said you've speedrun, right? That's your thing. Anybody else in here ever done a speedrun? You've done speedruns too? I mean, it takes a few times through, right? <laughs> One or two times? <laughs> I love the eyes she gave me. She's like, you're joking, right? Like. <laughs> Like, I'm pretty sure that's not how anything works. So <laughs> I just want to make sure I drive that point home though, guys. It's like, seriously, don't feel like you have to like overwhelm yourself. Music should be fun. It should be an expression of you. And, um, and you should really consider doing it your own way. Take something, go your own direction. Now that's not too out of the ordinary, I suppose, because again, Chocobo theme has a lot of, a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, different styles. But the next thing you can do I would say is to, let's just get a couple of ideas. Now I have a bunch of charts with me and I'm hoping that a couple of them intersect with what you guys like because that would be, that would be the ideal. That's what I saw in my head. So just shout out some of your favorite games or like I should say soundtracks from games maybe. Like, you know, what are the games specifically that you thought, oh my gosh, that game has an awesome soundtrack or at least a song that you loved from it. Anything at all, go ahead and yell them out. What did you say, sword stream? I don't even know what that is. Okay, what is in back? Kirby's Dreamland. Undertale. Yeah. Yes. Why you do? Okay. Uh, which one? Oh. Stop. It's, it, it reminds me of um, um, like Animal Crossing in that sense, where there's so many, right? There's so many like, okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm amazed nobody's said anything about a certain, uh, oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> what was that? Oh, Persona. Okay, yep. So now already we've got a list of things that are, that are, um, kind of driving the point home for, for what I was hoping for, which is that games in themselves are a work of art, right? But in, in my view, a game is a collection of art, more appropriately. It's not just one kind, right? So somebody makes uh, the art for a game, that's one element to it, and you might look at a game and go, it's kind of ugly, but it's really fun. Or the other way around, right? Where it's like, it's beautiful, but it's garbage. Like, that happens, right? Because there's so many variables, and it can come to light when somebody's like, oh, that game's great, but you have to mute it because the music is just like, Gah! and that's usually like really older stuff. I almost feel like when they were still kind of ironing that out or I, I don't know, hearing about how they used to make music happen on a Super Nintendo and a Genesis like still blows my mind. I'm like, how? You need smart folk like techs. Like they, they are the one you, I'm just gonna give Faust all, of the, I'm gonna give Faulty, Faulty. I'm gonna give Faulty all the, uh, all the credit there. He's the one who did it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so music makes a huge difference, right, to a game and whether or not we enjoy it. So, and, and, or at least it plays a factor into it. So the fact that you have connections with games because of the soundtrack, I mean, we're, you're my people. We're all in the same, again, another similar boat here. So it's funny, I have, I have one for, for, I have one that I would like to do um, in the folder. Let's pull up Green Greens. Mm, mm, right? Because I heard Kirby's Dreamland. Green Greens is a, uh, oh boy. Yeah, so this is just how I format my charts. Again, this, some, some things make sense to some people and some things are just like, what are you even looking at, right? So what I have done is I have made sure that I understand it's in 4-4, four, four, it's up-tempo, and every time there's, there's a letter, you see a D, that means it's a D chord. And then there's, I make a break so that there's a measure. Now, technically, you can put this on staff paper and make it a little easier for yourself or other people to read. This is basically like puzzle P shorthand, okay? This is what I, this is how I shorthand. I can read this when I'm performing live, which is important to me. So, tight. 
So if you end up doing it a different way, that totally makes sense. But yes, any and any time, you can always ping me somewhere like Discord or whatever. You find me and and we can I can share my my PDFs with you. I'm happy to share my charts with people. Not a problem at all. So this particular song, <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is a good one. So I have it in D. It makes sense for my voice. If it makes sense for your voice, uh, you might like it somewhere else. But you can feel free to like hum, sing, whatever you want to do along with me here. I'm just going to play it through, and then I'm going to take suggestions on how we should alter it. Okay? We're going to play. So the song goes... Bum ba dum, bum ba dum, bum ba ba ba, yada 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 lay. Bum ba dum, bum ba dum, bum ba ba ba, yada 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 lay. Ba ba dum ba, yada dum, ba 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 love these short loops. Maybe that's why they're my jam. I love short loop songs that I'm just like, yes, let's keep repeating it until people leave. <laughs> Anybody else ever have weird thoughts like that? Like I've always wanted to have a gig, an experiment like that, where I just keep doing the same song until people are like, no. <laughs> How many cycles before the last person leaves? Or is it always that one guy who's like, <laughs> it's cool, it's my favorite song. <laughs> You know what? That's a fair point. Bolero, if for anyone who has never heard that song, it's it's the same thing. It just slowly gets what louder and louder is that It's good. We could also do the Tetris theme that, that will just get faster and faster. So green greens, we have options here. So if we start here and we go, all right, now we know we've done it the way that it's, you know, similar to the game. And it just don't even think about the song actually. Think about like what's a what's a Call something out, like uh, what kind of style we could do. Flamenco. Flamenco. Are you thinking like a... that All, immediately I want those little shells those little little clam shells <laughs> oh my gosh just run around with maracas at all points at any time because you never know when a jam session will show hello I'm ready <laughs> how great would that be we need little GDQ egg shakers I think that's that's the that's <laughs> not allowed in the stream room <laughs> Oh my gosh, I just imagine the GDQ staff like, no, 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 no. I'm like, ah, <laughs> sorry. I just, the music moved us. All right. So let me <laughs> what other styles? What else could we do? It's a fast song. We could try something like broody and depressing, maybe. I don't know. Is there a way to make this song sound sad? Not really. Maybe it's 90s. Like I'm saying, like it's it's kind of fun to just maybe not even have an idea, just start playing something and see what happens, or listen to a completely different song and then be like, how do I make this song sound like that song? You know, the same kind of feeling, because chocobo theme is also up tempo, and also in the key of D. So there wasn't too, too much crossover I could do for that. Um, another great one though, because uh, somebody mentioned Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> okay, that's. <laughs> 
just another one of those games where, uh, okay, Chrono Trigger is this too. This is just like a total like, oh my gosh, like embarrassing, but also this is just my life. Um, most of my childhood was spent video playing video games, but I never beat most of them. Most of them was just me playing them obsessively and being like, I love the same thing over and over. Um, so I'd play Chrono Trigger until I got to, you know, Lavos and I'd be like, this is hard. And then I would just, he's got another layer, I'm out. Like it was, I would just give up so quickly, but I am, I mean, I'm completely know all the soundtrack except the last, the last theme I didn't hear until I was an adult. I was like, what is this from? My husband's like, Chrono Trigger. I was like, where? <laughs> Turns out. Okay, so there are themes for lots of things. Um, but uh, what was it, where was I going with this? Donkey Kong Country, thank you, sir. <laughs> so Donkey Kong Country is another one of those. Played a lot of the games, Donkey Kong Country, Donkey Kong Country 2, and even 3, never beat any of them. I mean, you get, to, and watching the speed runs is like one of my favorite things in the world, mostly because I get to see the whole game, and also because it's so cool to see them just shred those levels that I just rage quit, throw the controller out the window, like, forget it, no, I need you, come back, you know. Um, so it's, it's, so, it's so wonderful, but that's, a, that's another one of those game series where there are a lot of really good songs, super, super catchy. Um, and I'm going to do one that is, like I was saying, to start simple, right? Because there's a lot of actually really complicated music in that game. Like, if you listen to it, you're like, wait, what? Like, I sat down to start making charts for someone and was like, I'm not ready for this because I don't even think I know how to play that many chords on the uke yet. So I'm still working myself on it. Vocally can do whatever I want. Ukulele, only been three years, friends, so give me some time. I'll figure it out. Don't tell me to play an E chord. That it's somewhere. Okay. <clears throat> so this song is probably the simplest one I could figure out from the DKC uh, soundtrack. And it's actually Bonus Room Blitz. Yeah, familiar with that? Now, I do it a little different than the, than, the, than the game. And I think I actually might have a chart for this one. And we can share that. Yeah, I think it's called Bonus Room Blitz. <laughs> yeah, he's right on top of that. So um, when it's in the game, I think it's just da 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 Okay, so <laughs> it's basically that. Um, I added a little swing to it. So the way I do it is. <laughs> right? So there's swing versions. Thank you. We could even do it. Maybe it's, maybe it's sad that you went away. Why did you leave me, darling? Let me sing you the song of my people. There's some options there even. Anybody have ideas for thoughts on this one too? Or any, any like, should we noodle with something? No wrong answers. What, you ready to hear a mashup? <laughs> of uh, how so? Oh man, I see what you're saying. So almost like crossing the genres as far as like, let's, let's fade in and out from a game theme to a pop song. Well, to be fair, if you are learning an instrument, you know, even just four chords, you've got like 10 gazillion songs that you can play with those four chords. And here it is right now for the record, C, A minor, F, and G. 
you can now play most of humanity's music. That is that is legit. Like it is, I talk about the song of our people. I think that literally is the song of people. We hear that chord progression, we went, uh huh, and we haven't stopped since. Right? Can you can you attest to this too? Like every every song, and it's 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 funny because if when you're musically ready for something else, you're like, really those four chords again. But when you're like me, I'm like, yay! We can make exactly what you're suggesting, which is a bunch of mashups. And I think they've even done that, like four chord, like making fun of four chord songs and showing how many different ones you can do. Um, that one was in Final Fantasy too, actually four chord song or yeah, four chord song. Final Fantasy 15. I apologize that I don't know many Final Fantasy games. Final Fantasy 15 was my first game, my first Final Fantasy. So when it said for fans and first time, I was like, that's me, that's me, hello. Okay. <laughs> but that that had a great song in it that's only four chords. When the night has come and the land is dark and the moon is the only light we'll see. Oh, I won't be afraid. And then it's that big moment. I love how I just ruined my own song. Um, <laughs> I do that a lot. Uh, so that's, but that's a prime example. That was in a video game, prominently featured, although that cover, oh my gosh, has anybody actually taken the time to listen to the full song? I, I can't, like, I can't listen to it without crying every single time. Like, it's like, I'll be in a totally perfect mood, and then if that song comes up, I'm like, <laughs> it's like Florence and the Machine, I want to say, is the band. Yeah, if you haven't heard the whole song through, and you're ready for... You're ready for some emotions. If you want to feel the feels, that's that's a great one. Um, but that actually does tie in. I know we were talking about trying to hybrid uh, bonus room blitz, but I just think that's a perfect opportunity to to tie in um, what I had said earlier in the panel, which is seriously, there's so many pop songs, and like, because that one was written in like 1960. I think Ben E. King was the guy who originally did it, and then they did it in what 2017 when Final Fantasy 15 is that when it came out? Was that 2017 or was that 2016? <laughs> the progression of time freaks me out. Okay, so, that, but that's a prime example, right? So like they'll, they'll constantly be bringing up old songs that now have a new life and a new audience of people that may not have ever heard it before that moment. And now it's like, yay, keeping those songs alive, um, which is what I'm trying to do every time. That's why I made the Bonus Room Blitz chart. And that's why I legit do them at gigs where even I was saying before my panel started, I uh, just did a jazz festival over the weekend and Saturday I played primarily game music with my trio and people were like, most of them had no idea what I was doing. They're like, I was just expecting like, you know, like take five and... <laughs> I don't know what they were expecting, but most of them were not expecting that. Um, I had one very enthusiastic guy come up to me after and was like, thank you for doing music, your game music. It's like, I thought I was the only one. Like, no, no, there's this whole event in Bloomington. Okay. So, um, but it's pretty cool. I get a lot of satisfaction in knowing that I keep old songs alive, but also that I keep game music alive because I think so many of these themes are really beautiful and we need to keep keep doing them. So, um I want to make sure that I put a pro tip in here before uh, I get to the end, because man, oh man, it's amazing how time flies. But my biggest pro tip for you, um, I didn't want it to make it a part of the three step, right? Make, keep it simple, practice a lot, and um, improvise, play with it. But if I can give you any advice that will truly, truly help you as a musician and, and nurturing that, is to record yourself and listen back. Really do, I mean, I. I just use my cell phone, okay? I use my cell phone, the little voice recorder thing. It doesn't have to be pro level, but listen back to yourself and really hear yourself. Go, huh, because this is my experience I'll share with you. The first time I ever heard a recording of myself, you have to understand it was the 90s and it was a tape, like cassette tape player recorder and it sounded like a tape player. So it's not great quality at all. Like this phone is a million times better than that could record, right? So the first time I heard myself sing back, I cried. I was like, I'm so bad. Like I, because you just don't sound anything like, if you haven't heard a recording of yourself doing music, you don't sound anything like you do in your head. 
there's something about the resonance of our voice being connected to our, like everything shakes in a different way. It just sounds different. And when I think I'm doing really cool vocal things and then listen back and I'm like, whoa, that, that wasn't what I was expecting. You can learn so much from yourself because if you start comparing yourself to all the other musicians that you look up to, right? I have so many people that I looked up to and I was like, I'll never be able to do that. Yeah, of course not, I'm not that person. So you'll never be able to do exactly that. You'll be able to do your version of that, of what you're hoping to achieve. So I just wanna say that because it can end up being a discouragement to people to want to try and find your own thing because you're like, that sounds really weird. But if it sounds right to you when you hear it back and you refine it and all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, actually I heard that back and that, that sounds good. That means you've made that connection. You've made the link. You hear now what you're expecting to hear back. So you'll make that connection and then you'll start hearing more and more what you're hoping to do. So if you're like, again, you want to be like the next crazy metal singer, screamo band, and you don't know how you sound screaming yet, check it out, all right? Check out how your scream can, you know, is, is doing right now and take care of yourself. Good, good, good gracious. The screaming hurts my, my throat by proxy. I hear people scream and I'm like, oh, dear Lord, <laughs> take care of this instrument. You can't replace it. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so always compare yourself to yourself and then listen back, see if it ended up being what you intended. Sometimes there's happy accidents. Sometimes you hear yourself and you're like, that's not what I sound, thought I would sound like, but it sounds better or really cool or I like where that's going. Let's take it another step forward, right? So those are my, um, those are my, I don't know, tips, tricks. Hopefully they're helpful to you. Hopefully they at least, at the very least, inspire you to make some music, make some art, do something, right? Make something that's individual and your own thing. Um, I would love to take a few minutes if anybody has questions of any kind, like anything at all, like, or if you just want me to talk about something in, in particular you were hoping to get out of this panel that maybe I haven't covered, this is a great time to say something too. Um, we can just talk about how awesome Dark Man is. That'd be good too, right? Yeah, right? Woo! Yes. I like yes. Oh, yes, please. Please step up to the microphone, sir. Howdy. Hi. I, I'm a music teacher. Um, I teach, yeah, I teach strings and guitar. And I like to do an assignment in the middle school level where I have students sound out a melody and then play it in front of us on, on their violin. And they just they have a good time with it, but they're scary. Do you have any yes. advice or tips for sounding out a melody, especially if it's your first time jumping in? Oh boy, I mean, yeah, I suppose, uh, yeah, I think, I think the first thing that comes to my mind in middle school, first of all, bless you, <laughs> middle school is like one of the hardest times to teach, so you are truly a rock. Um, but I think a lot of it is making, maybe helping to take the stigma away of feeling like it's individual at first, maybe that it's a group activity first off the bat so everybody doesn't feel like, oh no, everybody's listening to me and zoning in on me, because being singled out is freaky the first time it happens you're like <laughs> I didn't say anything you know like so um, if it's a little bit of embarrassment that might help but if they're having trouble finding I think a lot of that is yeah like being in the choral setting so that's where I come from is a choral background so like um, hearing other people do it can help you correct yourself too so that would be a, a nice way to do it. Do you already do it in a group? Like, do you have them sing together or, or sound it out together? Um, we don't sing too much. Not too no. much? Okay. But that's, so you like vocally getting it first and then matching it on your instrument? I mean, he, this is only my advice because my primary instrument is my voice. So yeah. I always default to it because I'm like, oh, I can rely on that. But at the same time, having an instrument is an extension of you. So if they feel more confident, you know, plucking out the notes and figuring out where they fit there, that's fine too. But yeah, maybe in a group setting that might be easier. Like, okay, now we're gonna, you know, is it pluck along kind of thing? So I, like we can try it as a group. Let's yeah, that's, yeah, that's kind of yeah. takes the pressure off. And then maybe when you go individually, it's a little easier for them to be like, okay, at least I got a test run. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and sounding it out, I mean, you're doing it right. I think it's just a matter of repetition. Step two, practice, 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 right? You just keep doing it until it no longer feels weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Absolutely. And then I think stripey shirt in the back. Yeah, you have a question too? Come on up. I like stripey shirt. This is nice. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Uh, you said you came from a vocal background. I'm just wondering, because uh, most video game songs, at least definitely in the past, were non-vocal. Yes. Um, so I'm wondering what inspired you to go in that direction. It's 
given that you were a singer first and foremost? <laughs> That's a, that's actually a great question. Um, necessity, I think, is what led me there because I wanted so badly, so desperately to cover that music and um, not being able to play any other instrument other than singing, that's just kind of where I went. Um, but, you know, I love that you asked that because it really, it really was kind of freaky at first because when I was singing jazz primarily, it was jazz standards. It was songs with lyrics. And you're right, when I got to the 8-bit world and was like, oh, I love all these themes, but they don't have anything, so what do I do? I had to make a decision, and I en ended up making the decision that I was okay with scat singing most of it. Um, sometimes it makes sense, sometimes it's a little wacky and it just needs refining or work. I have so many charts that I brought along of like, like prime examples of them not sounding great yet because they're they're just like what are you doing it just sounds like a lot of and you're like okay but the thing is like i think it's just important that whatever your most comfortable instrument is to go with that so that even if you are not a singer and you play the piano really well or you only know how to play chords of on the guitar like it's somewhere to start so for me i started vocally even though they don't have words just because it's what i had because the tools available to me so yeah is that is that a is that yeah. a, okay? <laughs> I was like, did I go off on tangent too much? But awesome, thank you. Yeah, come on up. <clears throat> oh, this is tall. Oh, so tall. Hi, I'm short. Oh. Hi, short. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she's on the blue team. Love it. <clears throat> yeah, I kind of changed to red because my my friend made me. But that's a different story. Oh my. But um. What advice would you give to someone trying to figure out their singing voice? Because I used to be one of those like uh, choir kids when I was a lot younger, but yeah. I ended up like stopping that, and I lost any like progression I made with actually building up my voice. Girl, I feel you. Yeah. No, I've been out of college for ugh, ten years. Um, <clears throat> just kidding. Um, no, but it's been ten years since I've sung opera. Because in, in, in college, I did a lot of opera, and I don't sing it at all anymore. Those chops go away. So the harsh truth of this is, is that the longer you go without doing it, that skill doesn't stay. Um, unfortunately, it's not like riding a bicycle. Um, <clears throat> so the way that I would think about it is like when people like go work out, if you go up in there and you lift a bunch and then you take like a year break and then go back, you probably can't lift the same amount anymore. So it's the same thing. This is a muscle. So even though you're not in choir anymore, I know, right? It's like, it's a fun way to practice and, and get your chops up, but that you can still be doing those things. Um, like I would just recommend sing along with whatever style you want to be a part of. Like if you want to be like a pop singer, right? You want to sing more of like mainstream stuff. I don't know what your, what your jam is. Whatever it is, it's the right answer, first of all. And also just keep doing it. Get that muscle back up. Don't push it any harder than it wants to go. If it starts giving you signs, oh, it's kind of crackly, then stop. Give it a minute. Give it that rest in between, right? We lift and then we take a break and then we lift and then we take a break. So same thing with your voice. Treat it like it's it's got to take some time and then over time you will just build it up again. It will happen. So really less of doing a lot of work all at once and spacing it out every day, just a little bit. Sing a little every day, even if it's two songs. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Good, thanks. I believe you still have it. Trust me, it's still in there. Well, I mean, whenever I try to get <laughs> help from like one of the teachers at school, he's like, "Well, it's just the air," and it's like, "Thanks, but that's that that's like saying if you want to ride, learn how to ride a bike, you just ride it." It's like, "Well, just there's air." Yeah. Get out there and try it. I mean, kind of. Yeah. yeah, kind of. You know, it's like talk the talk versus walk the walk. You know, I like to sing, but I never do it then you're never really gonna get that muscle ready to perform when you want it to. I think one of the sayings that stuck with me from college was uh, rehearse the performance and then perform the, or perform the rehearsal and then rehearse the performance. So if you're always giving it your best shot in your rehearsal, by the time you're performing it, it's just like rehearsal. It doesn't feel any different and you don't have to ask anything more of your instrument. You're just like, just do what you always do. And it's like, okay, I can do that. Because then you have a bunch of other factors, right? Once you perform on a stage with a choir, suddenly there's a bunch of eyes looking back at you now, not just your choir direction, like, pay attention, right? <laughs> that was mine. She threw shoes at us a lot. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm not. I deserved it. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's still how I get back at my shoe to the head. No. Uh, yeah, but is it any other thing with that, or are you feeling? No, that's about it, yeah. That's great. Well, Thank keep you. singing, okay? Well, thank you.
<laughs> yeah, thanks for your question. Uh, anybody else? Any, yeah, we got one more, one more question we can do? Epic mustache, I love yes. this so much. You, you talked a bit about um, uh, playing with the uh, time signature, the meter, mm -hmm. uh, and transposing the key as, as different ways of doing your own version. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering about playing with the harmony. Is that something you ever change, uh, and to what end, and like how, how comfortable do you feel with that? Oh, I love that. Absolutely. I mean, I personally, yeah. Oh, I love I love that. My YouTube channel is full at the moment of recordings of just crazy ideas I've had in my head. So adding new harmonies, new new musical elements, that's a, a wonderful thing to add to it. I would highly recommend. I think yeah, keep doing keep doing harmony uh differences. When I'm when I'm working with my trio, there's another singer in there, so he can add additional harmonies or different elements. I think we were doing Dr. Wiley's Castle and he was singing the uh, the main theme for the second, you know, the second verse basically in that song where the main theme is going on and a harmony is going on. So being able to do both is kind of nice. So yeah, you can definitely play with that. Another thing that's fun to play about is whether or not it's a major or minor key. If you have a little bit of a little bit of musical knowledge to kind of turn it into like, oh, now this is now this is donkey, you know, bonus room blitz, but in in F minor instead, and it's just so sad. Like, I want a bonus, aren't you glad? Like, it could be this one. Yeah, I there's so much we could go over and so much we could noodle, but I love those ideas that changing it from major to minor, playing with harmonies. There's no there's no limit. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that is it. That is my time. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, if you feel so inclined to give me some feedback, I left uh, pens and paper. I would love to just hear your thoughts. Any other thing, if you'd like to connect with me afterwards, I would love that. Enjoy the rest of uh, GDQ. Thank you. Thank you.